Hi everybody, my name's Rebecca and welcome back to My Bookish Travels. I am so excited today to do this video. It has been one that I've been so excited about since I originally watched the video and it has been a few years but it still brings me great joy. It is the novel Cure Tag and it was created by Luminous Libro and Kaylee actually did tag me in this many years ago on my old channel but now I am just getting around to doing it and I am so excited. I feel like now is the perfect time to do it because I have read some really awesome books that work really well with this tag. The entire tag is surrounding you listing faults or illnesses from A to Z and recommending books that could cure that ailment. And Kaylee originally had this idea from the website novelcure.com. Kaylee did say that you could use her list of ailments or you could create your own and I've ended up actually being able to choose one from each of the ones that Kaylee originally listed in the video and let me know if you guys would agree with my decisions or if you have something that would fit it even better. Trust me, I feel like in today's society, recommendations for things that could cure ailments or illnesses or faults are definitely something high on my list. I feel like you learn so much from characters and you definitely get to live many different lives through reading these stories and getting to experience the characters and all of the things in a very safe, secure environment. So feel free if you have something that you would recommend instead of what I've said, please share that in the comments down below. The first one is A, and for this I chose Antisocial, and I chose The Duke and I because this book makes me want to go to these parties. I myself am not necessarily fully antisocial. I usually say I'm a shy extrovert once I'm there and I'm kind of involved and I'm feeling comfortable. I'm definitely an extrovert, but getting there, I'm quite shy and introverted and I can kind of flop between the two introverted and extroverted very easily. Don't know if there's an actual word for that, but in general, uh, the Duke and I would definitely make me want to not be antisocial because I would want to go to these parties and dress up and dance and have fun. Next is B, and for that I chose Boredom, and for this I chose Coraline by Neil Gaiman. This is chosen because Coraline is bored at the beginning of this story, and if you've read it, you know exactly where I'm going with this. I feel like if you read Coraline, you will never again say, I'm bored. For C, I chose Carelessness, and for that I chose Feeling Sorry for Celia by Jacqueline Moriarty. If you guys have not read this, Celia is not the main character in this book, but Celia is kind of what the story surrounds, and she just doesn't really care about anybody else or the consequences of her actions, and for that matter... I think if you read this, all of a sudden you're looking from somebody else's viewpoint on something and thinking, how can my actions affect this person? Next, for D, I chose Fear of Death, and for this I chose Poison by Bridget Zinn. And the reason why I chose it is because this author ended up passing away shortly after this novel was written, but with everything she was going through, I believe she was having cancer treatment... Um, it doesn't actually say, it just says her untimely death, but for some reason I feel like I read somewhere that she passed away from cancer. I could be mistaken, do not quote me on that, but definitely, you know, this could encourage you to not be scared of dying. You know, there's so much that you can do each day when you are here, and if you read this, I feel like you'll be inspired by that. Next for E, I chose Lack of Empathy, and for this I chose A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Guys, if you have not read A Little Princess, I feel like empathy is something you will walk away from having so much more of after you have read this story. F, I chose Fear of Failure, and for this I chose The Sheep Pig by Dick King Smith. This is what the film Babe is inspired from, and if you guys grew up watching Babe like I did, I think you will definitely have a love for this novel, but in general, I feel like The Sheep Pig is one that definitely encourages you to continue striving for your future and for your goals and what inspires you and what you want to do, because Failure is just a word, and 
it becomes more than a word when you actually let your actions be reflected because of that word. Next for G, I chose Goody Goody, and I picked out From What I Remember by Stacey Kramer and Valerie Thomas. This story is surrounding four youths, but one of them is a Goody Goody, and because she's a Goody Goody, all of a sudden these things end up taking place that are totally outside her comfort zone and totally change her character. And for that reason, I feel like this could cure you of being a Goody Goody and saying no to things that will definitely give you a different perspective. Next, I chose H for humorless, and for this, I chose One for the Money by Janet Ivanovich. And guys, I cannot read one of these books without laughing my head off. Stephanie Plum, Grandma Mazur, all of them in the series are characters that I absolutely love and are so humorous. And if you are feeling humorless, Wait, did I say they're humorless? No, they are full of humor. If you are feeling humorless, though, this book might just cure you. Next for I, I chose Insomnia. And for this, I actually chose The Invention of Hugo Cabre by Brian Selznick. And the reason why I chose this is if you kind of can get the vibe, if you've read anything by Brian Selznick, it's usually a little bit darker inside and there's a ton of artwork. So I feel like not necessarily that this book is going to make you want to fall asleep, but if you have insomnia, I feel like this book could relax you enough that your body could start to slow down and settle and feel relaxed enough to perhaps fall asleep. Mind you, you might want to stay up and finish the book, but I just mean this could cure your insomnia by making you not as stressed or thinking about all these other things because there's so much imagination going on in this story. For J, I chose Judgmental, and for this, I chose Beastly by Alex Flynn, and I'm sure everybody knows this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, so obviously, if you are feeling judgmental, go and remind yourself with that story or this one, and I'm sure that your judgmentalness might just be cured. For K, I chose Killjoy, and for this, I chose The Murder of Bindi McKenzie by Jacqueline Moriarty. This is the third book in the Ashbury Brookfield series. Earlier, I said Feeling Sorry for Celia. That's the first one. This one follows Bindi McKenzie, who is actually literally a Killjoy in this story. But what's funny is Killjoy, it's kind of a pun because life is stroked out and murder is on there and that is a legit thing in this series or at least in this book, Killjoy and like kill and joy and separating the words and together and everything like that. This book I'm sure is going to convince you that you should not be a killjoy and actions have consequences. So L, I chose lovesick and what better way to get out of being lovesick than to fall in love with someone else and I highly recommend Drago by Sarah Brienne. For M, I chose No Manners, and for that, I chose The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Earlier, I mentioned A Little Princess by the same author. This one, we follow our main character, Mary, who has absolutely no manners, and you see how she changes and becomes a better person and really does a 180 based on the people around her, and it really shows that manners really do matter. And I chose Nightmares, and for this I chose Dying to Meet You by Kate Kleiss, illustrated by M. Sarah Kleiss. This is the first book in the 43 Old Cemetery Road series, and what better way to get out of nightmares than something that kind of takes away that fear of something and makes it a little bit more humorous or fun. This one does have a ghost in it, but it is a friendly ghost similar to Casper in my mind, and it's just such a beautiful novel. When I say Casper, I should probably say it's like an 80-year-old woman who is a writer, not a, like, prepubescent boy in a ghost body. I'm getting off track. Anyway, nightmares. Try reading this. It might. For O, I chose Fear of Getting Old, and for this, I chose Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. If you guys are feeling like you're getting old and you're not wanting to, remind yourself that curiosity is great. Also, children's lit is completely lit.
For P, I chose procrastination. And if you guys are a procrastinator and feel like you're getting a master's degree in it, then maybe you should try If I Stay by Gail Foreman. This story will definitely make you take a step back and reappreciate the things around you and stop procrastinating on those things that you know you shouldn't be. Q, I chose in a quandary, and for this I chose The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. And why did I choose this? Because if you are in a quandary, perhaps you need to go on an adventure because it will definitely help you to remember what you're actually doing and help you get out of that quandary. For R, I chose lack of realism, and if you're struggling from this, then maybe you should try Insanity by Cameron Jace. And why do I say that? Well, I say that because Insanity is an Alice in Wonderland retelling, and I'm sure if there's anything that can make you distinguish between what is not real and what is, is 100% Alice. Yes, I chose Stress, and for this, I chose Austin Land by Shannon Hale. If you guys are feeling stressed, then obviously you probably are in the mood for some Mr. Darcy, and who wouldn't want to go on a vacation where they could immerse themselves in Austin? T, I chose Toothache, and if you have a toothache, you need to distract yourself, and you need to go and take on a challenge, and for that, I recommend 13 Little Blue Envelopes by Maureen Johnson. For you, I chose Uncouth, and if you are uncouth, then maybe you should read A Spy in the House by Wyatt. I'm sure that if you are feeling uncouth, this book will definitely help. I chose Vanity, and for this, I recommend Devoured by Amanda Maroney, and this is somehow connected to Snow White, if you can tell from the apple in the girl's hands, and I'm not going to say anything other than that, but Vanity, guys, read this and see why you should not be vain. W, I chose Writer's Block, and if you are feeling like you are blocked, I highly recommend Kill Many of the Orchard by Ella Montgomery. This one is my go-to for many different reasons, but if you are feeling uninspired or you have Writer's Block, 100% check this out. I'm sure that you're going to get re-inspired for all things. I chose xenophobia, and I thought, not on the humorous side, there is a pun intended here, but not really. I chose Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon, and if you have xenophobia, I'm sure that this might just cure you of it because of the surrounding circumstances and what actually happens in this book. And if you haven't read it or seen the movie, um, this definitely will help you with your xenophobia. For why I chose Yearning, and for that I chose Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Guys, if you are yearning for adventure and life and anything really, try reading this and you can see how one character gets to finally live what he yearned for. Lastly, if you guys are suffering from being a zealot, 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 zealot. And lastly, for Z, if you guys are feeling like a zealot or zealot, however you actually pronounce that word, because now that I'm saying it out loud, it does not sound like my brain was pronouncing it correctly. I would say The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. If you guys are suffering from that specific ailment, I'm pretty positive this book may potentially cure you of it just because of what happens in this story. Oh, there you go. A to Z, there's 26... Oh my goodness. It's been a long day. I'm somewhat sleep deprived. I can't even talk right. All right. Everything. These are the 26 books that I would recommend if you guys are suffering from one of these ailments. Try reading one. Let me know if it helps. I feel like a doctor. Doctor recommended dose. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
that is everything. This is the doctor's prescription for these ailments, recommended dose, read the full book, and let me know what works. And for those of you that have something else that you would have used instead of what I chose, please comment down below and tell me what you would use and what ailment it would cure. I'm very curious if you have something different from what I said or if you had a different viewpoint with how you went into it. I had a lot of fun with this. It my mom thought I was crazy while I was like trying to like look at my books and figure it out and I'm talking to myself being like, what would cure this? And she's like, do you have that? And I'm like, no, I'm just doing a book tag. So <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this. I really enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed getting to just randomly talk about books and have fun with it. I forgot how much fun book tags were. Um, also, if you guys are interested in seeing other book tags, feel free to comment down below and I will definitely try to incorporate some more book tags in here. Um, you know, it's, I feel like they aren't as big a thing here on booktube anymore and that's kind of sad. They were so much fun. I kind of hope they make a comeback. Anyway, I will talk to you guys next time. Until then, stay safe, stay well, and I will see you next time. Bye!